true. So good job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So ain't like I can do anything right now in your fucking room. You're probably cleaning up like these. You need to be using Wush. So two years ago, I bought a PS4 in anticipation of the Spider-Man PS4 game, which just recently came out and is exactly as awesome as I was hoping it would be. I mean, you know, I don't love sneaking through art galleries as Mary Jane or connecting circuit breakers or whatever, but overall the game is pretty amazing. I even love the weird Nike sneaker Spider-Man design, but I think the design that I like the most is actually the Rhino, who just so happens to be one of my favorite B-list Spider-Man characters. I don't really know why, he's not a particularly interesting guy, he's just a big thug in a rhino suit, but regardless, I've been sort of obsessing with him since I saw his design in the trailers for the game, so I decided to make a video about the history of the rhino, but in doing so... Okay, for this video I was doing some research and basing some of the video off my general nerdy knowledge of the character, but nearing the end of the research, I popped onto the Wikipedia to make sure I wasn't missing anything important or essential about Alexei Sitsevich or Alexander O'Hearn, the two versions of the rhino I'm familiar with, and I found that the Wikipedia description of the rhino's history is pretty hilarious. Now, I, I don't know if you know this, but old comics are pretty ridiculous. Not that I'm saying they're bad, but there are a lot of leaps in logic, and they're just really goofy, and, you know, they weren't as obsessed with making everything make sense. It was kind of just, hey, let's have this guy dress up in a big rhino suit and fight Spider-Man, because that would be cool. And reading that insane comic history summarized in very direct, humorless Wikipedia description is just kind of gold, because they give you so little context about what's going on. They just kind of give you the facts of the situations and the main plot beats, and it's really kind of funny. So I'll quickly go over the character's history, then pretty much I'm just going to tell you the stories through the Wikipedia entry for the Rhino, with some context from the comics, but I'm going to give you the context after the fact, because it's pretty funny hearing the story without the context. So back to basics for a second, Rhino was created by Stan Lee and John Romita Sr., not to be confused with John Romita Jr., who is also a famous Marvel comic artist who's well known for that style that everyone either loves or hates or is impartial to. I kind of oh, like it. The first one. comic I ever read was that Spider-Man Ezekiel spider totem arc that John Romita Jr. did art for, where there was some cult and a bunch of spiders got together to make a big man no, made out of spiders or some... No, anyway, it was great stuff. Or it wasn't. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm not rereading it for this because it has no, nothing to do with Rhino. And this video is all about the Rhino. So yeah. let's get back to Rhino, who, also known as Alexei Sitsevich, usually... Unless you watch the TV shows, in which case he's sometimes not, or if you read the Ultimate Comics. Anyway, Alexei was a thug who worked for some scientists, which, you know, every scientist needs a thug working for them, right? I mean, I guess in a comic yes. book universe, that makes a little bit more sense. If I were a scientist in the Marvel Universe, I'd get a thug to protect me, because villains are always kidnapping scientists and making them build stuff, yeah. or I guess the scientists often just end up becoming supervillains themselves, uh -huh. like you know, most Spider-Man villains are. But anyway, one day, the scientists go, hey, we're gonna give you some artificial skin that'll give you super strength. Also, it has a rhino horn on it, and we'll have weird little closed rhino eyes on it. And I guess he didn't think to say, hey, will I be able to take this skin off? Because no, no, he, he, he can't. He can't. He can't just take it off whenever he wants. And I guess we just glaze past all the questions of how does he pee? How That's does he sweat? Anyway, rhino. the scientists Stuck put this super thing. rhino skin Man, on Alexei Sitsevich. The then I guess Rhino decides he didn't like that he couldn't pee or something because he destroyed their science lab. And this is where we get into the Wikipedia he stuff, because without thug. contests, it's all great. It just, just jumps power. straight from him escaping to him what going to kidnap J. Jonah Jameson's kid. But the best part is the reason. Oh, it's because yeah. Will <laughs> Jameson, who's an astronaut at this point, was in space and got some... <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> is a rhino kidnapped my son, the astronaut? <laughs> yes. Oh, is that, yeah, I know, but people, that ain't J. Jumma Jameson's son's actual <coughs> name. It just in Spider-Man 2, when he was uh, in the movie, he kept, J. Jumma Jameson, he kept saying, my son, the astronaut. <laughs> it was funny. 
<laughs> extraterrestrial spores on him, and I guess you know? Rhino wanted the spores, or someone hired Rhino who wanted the spores, but that seems like a big ordeal. Do you really have to kidnap a whole man just for the equivalent of space dandruff on his shirt? I mean, yeah, you could just, just steal the space shirt. suit instead of, you know, stealing a whole man? <laughs> that seems like a lot of effort to go through for some little space dust. Anyway, Spider-Man frees a little Jameson, beats up Rhino, <laughs> and gets him locked up. But then Rhino just, you know, gets out again two yeah. issues later, and for some reason still decides to go and kidnap Jameson. He's just really committed, I guess. Also, this second time, Spider-Man comes at Rhino with this acid that can melt the Rhino suit off him. So, when Rhino was arrested, nobody tried to get the skin off him? I mean, I know prisons generally have problems of not being genuinely good for rehabilitation and are just establishments that make our lawbreakers even more bitter and unlikely. Well, yeah, but wouldn't they... Okay, I'm with him for... Get the, the suit's melt, just get it off. Then he can't break the fuck out. A prison. Ever become well-adjusted members of society. But come on, someone could have figured out how to get that rhino suit off him in jail instead of going, ah, let's just let him keep his super strength and we'll try and sedate him 24-7. I'm sure that'll be fine. Which it obviously was not fine because he escapes two issues after he was put away. But yeah, he escaped from prison. Spider-Man... You know, melts the suit off him, then so I'm just knocks Rhino's him like out. One of, then Rhino just lives in his prison sentence. I wonder why Rhino's sentence. one of Spider-Man like, main the, villains. the wiki just says he does that. I don't know how long that was. I guess it wasn't a very long time. I mean, how long should someone be locked up for dressing up as a Rhino and kidnapping someone to get their space dandruff? Why? I don't know. That's a decision best left to the suits in Washington, why I guess. But Rhino that? serves his sentence, then gets out. Great. Good. Fun. And then immediately after he gets out, those scientists whose lab he smashed are like, hey, we've got another suit. To which I assume the rhino was like, nah, get out of here. But then they said, wait a minute, you can take this one off. To which I, I guess he was just like, yeah, all right, the prison system meant to rehabilitate me as garbage and I'm still a bad dude. So let's put back on a rhino suit and go kidnap somebody. But this time it's Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk. I don't think Hulk was quite as overpowered back then as he is now, but that is still some brash arrogance to think, hey, I should kidnap the strongest dude on the planet. What could go wrong? Anyway, everything goes wrong. Hulk just knocks him out. A lot. And Rhino's left in a cup. But, during, but it depends what time period it was. There's a certain media during a certain what time. Rat. Not that many people knew what Bruce rat. Banner was the Hulk. Or Bruce David Banner. Oma. And that is the end of the ride. No. No, I'm kidding. But how, how did Rhino survive the whole... He is in a coma for a while, and he only gets woken up by a Hulk villain. Rhino is woken up by Leader, and Leader wants Rhino's help, but he doesn't really need him to do much. He just kind of wants Rhino to be a guard for him, because Leader's going to go mess up Hulk's wedding. See, the Hulk, or, sorry, Bruce Banner, who comes to Hulk, is getting married to Betty Ross, who, you all know, she's played by Liv Tyler in that one movie, and she has that famously unapproving dad, Steven Tyler, no, no, sorry, not Steven Tyler, that's Liv Tyler's dad, Betty's dad, General Ross, who eventually becomes Red Hulk for some reason, but that's, man, comics are weird. Anyway, they're going to mess up. Bruce Banner's wedding to Betty Ross. And Leader's gonna shoot this laser at Bruce Banner to make him turn into the Hulk so that he'll kill Betty Ross's dad, General Ross. So they're at the wedding, and, you know, right away, Rhino just decides to attack the Hulk, as opposed to going with this great plan Leader had come up with. Then there's a lot of changing sides that gets a bit group. confusing, but basically then there's a spaceship explosion, which... There, in the Wikipedia description, there was no establishment that anyone had a spaceship, but apparently Leader had a spaceship because it said that it exploded. And in that explosion, the Rhino is blasted and gets put in a coma again. But this all gets even better. And this is where I really love the Wikipedia description because it just says 
leader who was paralyzed after a previous encounter with the Hulk finds and takes mental control of the still comatose body of the Rhino and attacks Hulk. So at this point Rhino has failed twice against Hulk, but in the follow-up to this, somehow, and the wiki gives me no context, but leader got paralyzed at some point, but the wiki just states, oh yeah, by the way, th this is a thing, the leader's paralyzed now, Rhino is still comatose, and Leader, who is supposed to be a genius, takes control of Rhino's body and makes this comatose corpse of a guy who's already lost to Hulk twice, he, he makes him fight the Hulk, again, but while he's in a coma. But this guy has lost to the Hulk twice. It's not working out. Plus, he's been through a lot. He went to a heartless prison system, then was in a coma, then was in another coma. Leave his body alone, you <laughs> Then somehow the battle leads to an alien world. That, like, the wiki literally just states that very matter-of-factly. I mean, I guess they've mentioned spaceships at this point, so we can probably assume they hop on a spaceship while they were fighting and they're just blasting off into space and then it just says I, I guess they get to that alien world and the fight ends the leader just flees so now rhino has been shot into space fighting a guy he's never been able to beat and he's just unconscious in space with the hulk but i guess the Not, hulk is a good guy because right after this it just says in, and i'm quoting here Bruce and the unconscious but now recovered Rhino travel back to Earth via a rocket. What exactly does unconscious but now recovered mean? Is he recovered from his coma? Or is he just recovered from being body snatched? Is he still in a coma? Because I would not call that now recovered. He hasn't really recovered from anything. Anyway, there are more ridiculous rhino adventures. The next one is fun because it's <laughs> Rhino and Abomination fighting Hulk. And the cover of this comic is just the two of them running at the Hulk from opposite sides. And according to the Wikipedia entry, Hulk beats them by just jumping out of the way and letting them headbutt each other. Which is funny because in most Spider-Man games to beat Rhino, you just get him to bash his head into stuff and then you punch his butt for a while while he's busy. So, I guess, weirdly enough, even though Rhino's built to smash stuff with his head, his one real weakness, besides, you know, not being as good as the Hulk, is that he's really bad at headbutting stuff. But yeah, this has been the weird animated history of the Rhino. If you and that's because he has the horn on his head, so when, when he is headbutt something, he you jump out of the way, and it gets stuck. That's why more he's more of a stomping slash hitting guy instead of a running guy. <coughs> okay, we don't know. Yes. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe.